Hi YouTube, today I'm reviewing the HP 95LX, which was the first of the HP MS-DOS Palm Top series. And I'm reviewing this since there aren't all that many reviews in YouTube, and there's some other features of this device that I've recently discovered. So I'll open this up here real quick. There were, this was released in 1991, it was part of Project Jaguar. And there are two versions of the device released, one with 512K of RAM and then a later version with a full megabyte of RAM, which gives you both 640K of DOS standard memory plus a RAM disk of approximately 360 kilobytes. This was pretty revolutionary for the time. There was already the Atari portfolio and the pocket PC, but this was smaller than both and had an exceptional battery life. Quickly focus on the device here. So my my device has one meg of RAM and includes a number of built-in applications that I'll show you now. Okay, so all these applications which you can see in the bottom of the display there include a filer at left, a communications tool, a appointment, uh, appointment keeper, phone directory, memo, Lotus123, and a great calculator that includes HP's solve feature and can be used as a graphing calculator. All these were included in the standard 1 meg of ROM and were executed in place which helps save RAM. So that was a great feature there. So I'll step through them one by one now. With a filer, you can go through the C drive, which is the RAM disk. And so I have a few extra applications here. There's something called Tiger Fox that's built in, some standard worksheets. And I have a driver built in called um, HB95 STPX that lets you use compact flash cards in the device as well as a standard ANSI driver. So anyway, this was standard with the device and has nice pop-up menus that were based off Lotus 123, which I'll show you in a bit, that was standard on this model and made it great for business people on the go. The next tool is, is COM, that's a standard terminal emulator. You can set it up with given baud rates and terminal emulation, great for connecting to BBSs and so forth. Uh, appointment book, different times and days and so on, phone book, memo, and then Lotus123. Okay. Now Lotus123 spreadsheet that I'll test out here, five, six, seven, and then I can get a sum of those. Uh, it's at sum, at sum, a3 to A1. So 18, there you go. So you can add in formulas and merge cells and so on. I'll quit this. Yes, quit. No worksheet changes. And then quit memo. A quick thing to notice is it leaves up previously opened apps. Phone book, I'll quit that. Appointment book, quit. Datacom, quit. And now I can jump to HP Calc. I can see if I'm able to, to graph an, anything. Let me take a look real quick here. Solve. Uh, y equals x. times 2, y equals 2x, f10 graph, and then draw. And yep, so you get a nice graphing calculator that was built into this model as well as the HP 100 and 200 LX. So these are the built-in programs. In a later video I'll show you some custom programs I've added in plus uh, programs I've developed to help with gaming, writing, and programming and so on. But now I just want to give a few more technical details about the machine. And before that, I'll quit from the solver.
Now I don't want to see the equation list. And I'll get back to that nice front panel business card view and close that up. This device is really an XT compatible machine in your pocket. It has an NEC V20 processor that runs at 5.37 megahertz, just looking here at the Wikipedia page, and that's already a bit faster in clock speed than the 8088 that you'd see in the um, IBM PC and PCXT, but in addition, the V20 is really a souped up, higher performance 8088 compatible, and it runs approximately 25% faster, or has 25% higher performance and equivalent clock speed compared with that previous processor. It has MS-DOS 3.22 built in. The display is 40 by 16 letters, as you can see here. And it's not compatible with a lot of DOS software because it uses a special graphics mode that's 240 pixels long by 128 pixels high. There were some programs such as HP 95LX Tetris that take advantage of that extra, extra mode. So besides that, as you noticed, it has, it has a speaker and then the other features you can see on the sides. I'll turn this off and then rotate the machine to show those. So on the left side here is a PC card slot that's quite interesting. So it's, it's PCMCIA version 1, but it's a type 2 slot so you can fit in things like a compact flash card, which many people think doesn't work with this machine, but thanks to drivers that have been developed, there's five 5-volt five compact flash cards that do work in here. Most people think just SRAM cards work in there because it's a PC card version 1 slot, but it's, it's type 2, so it can fit the form factor of the uh, PC compact flash adapter or the PC card, PC MCIA flash cards which are normally type 2, whereas the type 1 SRAM cards are just flat. That's the left side. On the right side, there's a few other features that are useful. There's a 4-pin... Let me focus here. It's focusing on my hand. Anyway, so there's a 4-pin... Um, right here, There, you, it's hard to see, but there's a 4-pin serial port, a... AC adapter plug and then right under this little let me get that open real quick right under this little slot that I'm pulling out is two things one is a the first on the left is is a place for a battery to back up the the internal RAM disk in case of main battery fa failure and to the right is an infrared port. For some reason, there's normally a plastic casing around this in other models, but I guess uh, the one I got happened to miss that. This IR port's interesting. It's powerful enough, unlike that of the later models, that it can even be used to control TV sets. It can transmit information to another HP SIR port at a rate of up to 2400 bips. So that's great for transferring files from one LX to another. Overall, it's a very nice unit. It has a great chiclet keypad. And even though it can't run a ton of MS-DOS programs, anything that works in standard text mode or can have, have its uh, text window adapted works, works great. And there's a surprising amount of software that was run to take advantage of the display. In future videos, I'll show several different games that work on this. A chip aid interpreter I've developed, DOS frauds, and a uh, roguelike, among other games, as well as how you can write text in this and things other than the memo pad, which is limited to 64K of RAM, and how I've used terminal emulators to use this as a nice dumb terminal with Linux-powered routers and other d devices. And with that, I appreciate your attention and thank you for watching.